The 1984 unsolved murder case of Gregory Villeman remains a haunting mystery to this day. Found dead in the Valona River near De Solis, France, four-year-old Gregory was discovered with a wool hat covering his face and bound hands and feet. Despite a sinister message received by his family following the tragic event, the perpetrator has never been brought to justice. Jean-Marie received a call warning him to keep his son Gregory from spending too much time outside or else he might find him dead. Despite being calm and collected, Jean-Marie lost his temper and threatened the caller for potentially harming his son. In March 1983, the Villeman family received a threatening letter written in black, bold letters. Villeman family, I will kill you. If you refuse, I will carry out the same threat I made to the boss and his family. The choice is yours, life or death. After this message, the caller fell silent for a year and a half, causing the family to lower their guard. However, on October 16, 1984, tragedy struck as Gregory disappeared while playing outside under Christine's watch. Shortly after 5 p.m., Christine reported him missing, and at 5.30 p.m., Gregory's uncle, Mikkel Velleman, received a chilling phone call. The caller informed him that the boy had been abducted and thrown into the Valona River. Later that evening, seven kilometers away from their residence, Gregory's lifeless body was found. He was discovered with a wool hat covering his face, his hands and feet bound by a rope that was also tied around his neck. Despite the horrifying circumstances, investigators noted a serene expression on his face when the hat was removed. There were no signs of struggle or trauma, and his clothing remained undisturbed. The following day, the family received an anonymous letter addressed to Jean Marie, saying, I wish for your sorrow to consume you, boss. Your wealth cannot bring your son back. This is my retaliation, you fool. The media quickly took interest in a notable case involving a suspect known as Le Corbeau, or The Crow, a French term referring to an anonymous letter writer popularized by the 1943 film Le Corbeau. This prompted law enforcement to initiate a search for the perpetrator. Initial focus was on anonymous phone calls, revealing two distinct callers, one male and one female. Subsequently, two eyewitnesses provided descriptions of a dark-haired individual leading the police to create composite sketches resembling Bernard LaRoche, a cousin of Jean Marie. Handwriting analysis indicated similarities between LaRoche's signature and that on the letter dated October 17th. Despite having an alibi for most of the 16th, a period of approximately 30 to 45 minutes raised suspicions as it could not be verified. Furthermore, LaRoche's frequent association with Mikkel Velleman, the recipient of the aforementioned anonymous call about Gregory's whereabouts, raised eyebrows. Reporters noted LaRoche's apparent lack of concern following the child's death. His outburst highlighted his feelings of being mistreated by the Villeman family and a belief that they deserved consequences. His behavior intensified when his 15-year-old sister-in-law, Muriel Bull, informed the authorities that LaRoche had picked her up from school on the same day he allegedly took a young boy to an unfamiliar residence. When they drove away again and made a stop, LaRoche exited the car and brought the boy along with him. Upon his return, the boy was no longer with him. Following this, Bernard LaRoche was taken into custody. Later, Bull retracted her statement, stating that she had been pressured by the police. She claimed that the authorities had raised their voices and threatened to send her to a reformatory to coerce her into agreeing with their version of events. Her change of testimony, coupled with LaRoche's persistent denial of involvement in the crime, led the police to lack substantial grounds for holding him. Consequently, Bernard LaRoche was released from detention on February 4, 1985. Despite the limited evidence and determination to uncover the perpetrator, handwriting experts revisited the anonymous letters. On March 25, 1985, they determined that Christine, Gregory's mother, was likely the one who wrote them. Jean Marie remained unconvinced. He was so convinced of his cousin Bernard LaRoche's guilt that he publicly declared to reporters his intention to kill LaRoche. He fulfilled this vow on March 29, 1985 fatally shooting LaRoche as he left for work. 
Jean Marie was subsequently convicted of murder and sentenced to five years in prison. After taking into account the time spent awaiting trial and a partial suspension of his sentence, he was released in December 1987, having served only two and a half years. During Jean Marie's imprisonment, suspicion continued to fall upon Christine. Not only did the handwriting analysis point towards her, but four witnesses claimed to have seen her at the post office on the day of Gregory's murder. The discovery of a rope similar to the one used to bind Gregory in the family's home's basement further fueled suspicions against her. In July 1985, Christine Velleman faced arrest and allegations of her involvement in her son's death, but she refused to capitulate easily. As Christina was expecting a child, she embarked on an 11-day hunger strike during her imprisonment. Shortly after, an appeals court recognized the lack of substantial evidence and a clear motive leading to Christine's release. However, the consequences had already taken their toll as she suffered a miscarriage, losing one of the twins she was carrying. Despite being formally cleared of the charges only on February 2, 1993, the case remained unsolved until 2000 when DNA testing on a stamp from an anonymous letter breathed new life into the investigation. Unfortunately, the results were inconclusive. Subsequent DNA tests on the rope used in Gregory's binding, the letters, and other evidence in December 2008 also provided no definitive answers. Further DNA examination in April 2013 on Gregory's clothing and shoes yielded inconclusive results once again. With the aid of advanced technology in 2017, investigators revisited past interviews, using software to highlight inconsistencies in statements. This led to the identification of Marcel and Jacqueline Jacob, Gregory's great-uncle and great-aunt, as a focal point. The couple chose to exercise their right to remain silent and were released without charge. The resurgence of the investigation in 2017 prompted turmoil as Jean Mikel Lambert, the magistrate responsible for the initial inquiry, tragically took his own life on July 11th of that year. In a farewell letter, he attributed his decision to the overwhelming pressure resulting from the case's reopening. In June 2017, Muriel Bowles' cousin, Patrick Favor, informed the police that Bowles' family had subjected her to physical abuse in 1984 to force her to retract her testimony against Bernard LaRoche. Bowles refuted this claim in her 2018 book, Breaking the Silence, where she accuses Favor of lying. She asserts her innocence as well as that of Bernard LaRoche, blaming the police for pressuring her to implicate him. In 2019, Bull faced charges of aggravated defamation after Favor reported the matter to the authorities. In January 2020, the Paris Court of Appeal nullified a portion of Muriel Bull's statement, citing that her interrogation, conducted without her parents or legal representation, violated the French Constitution. The unresolved case involving the murder of four-year-old Gregory Villemin remains a mystery, with no one held accountable for the tragic loss of the innocent child's life.